When you are working on an online game, you want to write data to the server. The player has had that many victories, their name is this or that, and they use that class. Well, you want to store data. In this part, we're going to see how to write and retrieve data from the server storage. So let's head to our demo.gd script where we will first create some data that we want to store. Your data is going to be JSON collection. So it's like a JSON object in which you can nest objects, key and value pairs as deep as you want. We're going to create a list of characters here, an array, and we're going to store each character as a dictionary. For example, let's say we want to store our character's name. It's going to be Jack and a character's color. That's what we do in the complete Godot Nakama demo. So we're going to create Godot color object and the color class has a method called to HTML that returns the color as a hexadecimal string. And we're going to say we want it without alpha. Add a comma, duplicate the line, and we're going to store another character called Lisa, let's say, and her color is going to be red. With that, we have some data that we want to store on the server. So that's where we have to head to serverconnection.gd and around the bottom, we are going to create a new method for that. Let's create a new function called write characters async. This is just an example of writing and retrieving data. The point is that you can really store anything you want, any good dictionary or data that you can convert to JSON. So we're going to say you have to pass a list of characters by default, it's going to be empty, so it would wipe the characters array. And we have to call a function on the client API. So let's go with Nakama client, our client here stored in the underscore client variable, and we're going to call write storage objects async. For this, we need to pass two arguments. First, we need to pass the session object to authenticate the client that's calling that. And then I'm going to wrap my lines here. And there I'm going to write my Nakama write storage object. And we need to pass an array of Nakama write storage objects. So I'm going to create an array and let's create a new Nakama write storage object dot new. So we create an instance of the class. This one is going to take a few parameters. You can control click on it to see the parameters to get there. And you can see in the init function, it needs the name of a collection. It's a key to your table, let's say on the server where the data is going to be stored. So you have one collection, one key. You can think of it as nested dictionaries, right? We're going to create those two, then the read permissions. I'll expand the editor here, write permissions. The value that you want to store is going to be some data converted to a JSON string. And the version is a specific value that would be provided by Nakama. It tells you if some data existed on the server before to do versioning, but it's not something that you provide yourself, like saying it's file version 0.1.0. So just be wary of that. So back to the server connection script. We first pass the collection. So let's say this is data about the player. Let's say it's player data. So we're going to store the two characters that the player made in our example. So we're going to set characters as the key and this collection and key we will use it to retrieve the data from the server. Now we need to pass some read and write permissions. So to do so, we're gonna head back to the top of the script and these are integer values, zero, one, two. So we want to store them in enums around the top of the script. So we're going to create a first enum called read permissions and it's going to have don't read, owner read is the value one and public read. So like you can prevent some clients from reading other clients data, etc. And we're going to have write permissions there. The values are for zero. It's you prevent writing. And one means the owner of the data can write to the storage. Back to write characters async, we are going to pass in some read positions. So we're going to say the owner of the data can read it or write to it. So write permissions dot owner write. 
these values are just one and one, but as you can see, uh, it's much nicer if we have an enum for that. It's much more readable. Then we need to pass the data as a string. So we're going to use the JSON class. JSON.print is going to convert some Godot data into a dictionary. And we're going to create a dictionary like that. We're going to say characters is equal to, so the characters key, here is going to be equal to characters here at the array. So characters. And finally, we still have to pass the last argument. We're going to pass an empty string. So we don't have any version that we pass to the object. Now with that, we are going to wrap that call and turn it into a coroutine. So use the yield keyword at the start. And at the bottom, we're going to wait for the call to complete. And that's all we need for this function. Now we are going to write a function to get that data back. So let's create a new function. I'll call it get characters async. And this one is going to return an array of characters. So our initial data type. Let's first create that arrays. We're going to create an empty one to start with and return it from the function. Now to retrieve the objects or any data from the storage, we have to use another function of the client API. It's going to be read storage object async. To this one, we're going to pass our session and we need to pass an array of Nakama storage object ID like so. So we're going to create a new instance of that object. Now for this one, you need to pass the following pieces of information. The collection, the key that we use to store the data, the ID of the user who owns the data. So in our case, it's going to be the ID of the current client. And you can also pass a version hash, but we're not using that at the moment. So the collection is player data, the key characters. So we're going to pass player data. Uh, the second argument is going to be characters. And the ID of the user is held on the session object, the Nakama session. So we're going to pass session.user ID. Now, as usual, we're going to turn that into a coroutine. So we're going to wait for the function to complete. I'll wrap it in parentheses and add the yield keyword uh, in front of the call. And we're going to store that in a variable. So let's call that variable storage objects because it return an object of the type Nakama API dot API storage objects. So a list of these objects. If you call that function specifically read storage objects async, you can always control click on the function to jump to the function definition so you can see exactly what it returns. At the moment, some complex return types are not supported by Godot version 3.2. So this is why you don't get auto completion for them. All right, so we get these storage objects. Now we need to convert them to an array of characters. So we can check that we have objects on our storage objects. It has a key called objects. And we're going to use the JSON class to decode the storage objects. That's our uh, JSON data, JSON text. So we're going to create a new variable. Let's call it decoded. We expect an array, an array of characters. This is what we're supposed to store. So we're going to call json.pass. Now we know that we only have one object. We created our characters here. We wrapped them into one dictionary. So we expect only one object. We're going to pass storage objects dot objects zero. And this is what we need the if statement because if we try to access something that doesn't exist, it's not going to work dot value. And then the API storage objects store a result key that contains the dictionary that we expect. So result dot characters. And just so you get it, the storage object is going to look something like that. So it's going to be a dictionary with a key called result. And that result is a dictionary that contains our characters. I'm using a different syntax, like the Python like syntax and not Lua this time, but it's going to be characters and characters is going to be an array. You get the point. That's the kind of data you get back from the API storage object. Now this should give us our array of characters. So then we can say uh, characters equals decoded and note that depending on how you want to write the function, you can return the first line. If we get to the end of the function, we return an empty array like so. And if we have storage objects, we can return decoded. 
our variable. And with that, we can write data on the server and retrieve it. So to do so, we're going to save our code and head to the demo.gd file. Here, we need to call write characters async on our server connection node. So let's write the yield keyword, server connection dot write characters async. We're going to write our arrays of characters, wait for the function to complete, and then we are going to retrieve the data from the server. That's the whole point of the exercise and of the example. So we can say characters data is going to be equal to uh, yield server connection dot get characters async, and we'll wait for that to complete as well. From which you can just, you could say, print the character data, you would see that we retrieve it. We are going to write it to the debug panel. So what I'm going to do is create some text string to write one label to the debug panel. Let's call it string. It's going to be an empty string and I'm going to loop over the characters. So for character uh, in characters data, I'm going to add some text to my string variable. We're going to uh, say the name and the color of the character. So we can use string interpo interpolation for that with a backlash n at the end of the line to have line wraps. And we can say we want to print the character's name and the character's color. And we'll write that to our debug panel. So debug panel that write message is going to be from server storage. So this is the data we get back from the server, right? Well, not printing it directly. And I can put a backlash in maybe here and plus a string. Now it's time to test it. My server is running and I'm press F5. We'll see from the server storage, we get Jack and the color, Lisa and the color. So once you have that data, you can then load it back to create characters in the game, which is what we do in the final demo. But that's the gist of server storage. It's really all you do. The data you're going to store on the server is entirely up to you and depends on your game. But that is at least the basics of it.